Hi class, the civil rights movement can be defined as a movement to secure for African Americans equal access to and for opportunities for the basic privileges and rights of U.S. citizenship. The roots of the civil rights movement go back to the 19th century after the Civil War, but the movement gains speed after soldiers return home from World War II, and then it will peak in the 1950s and 60s. According to Reverend Fred Shuttlesworth of Birmingham, Alabama, the movement was a fire you could not put out. African American men and women, along with many whites, organized and led the movement at a national and local level. They pursued their goals through legal means, negotiations, petitions, and nonviolent protest demonstrations. People died so that others could have the rights. The Civil Rights Movement centered around the American South, where the African American population was concentrated and where racial inequality in education, economic opportunity, and the political and legal processes were most blatant. It didn't mean that the North did not have issues as well, but beginning in the late 19th century, state and local governments had passed segregation laws known as Jim Crow laws that we've already talked about in this class and mandated restrictions on voting qualifications that left the black population economically and politically powerless. African Americans throughout much of the South were denied the right to vote, barred from public facilities, subject to insults, violence, faced down the KKK, and could not expect the justice system to work for them in the courts. In the North, black Americans <clears throat> also faced discrimination in housing, employment, education, and many other areas. But the civil rights movement made vitally important progress and changes on the way. In this lecture, we will talk about some of the more important events of the civil rights movement. Of course, I will talk about the cradle of the movement in Birmingham, Alabama. The top photo on the slide is an iconic image of the Birmingham movement. When our uh, police commissioner in Birmingham unleashed dogs on children who were peacefully protesting, this photo went round the world class and drew attention to the violence in the southern U.S. The picture on the bottom right is of Elizabeth Eckford, one of the first African-American girls attempting to attend Little Rock, Arkansas's Central High School, and the young woman screaming at her is Hazel Bryant. It is also an iconic image of hate and violence that spread through the U.S. during the 1950s and 60s, and I'll tell you an interesting story about these two ladies in just a minute. <clears throat> As I mentioned before, soldiers returning from World War II were looking for change. But the first big test in the civil rights movement in the 1950s was a court case called Brown versus the Board of Education. This was a Supreme Court case class between Oliver Brown for his daughter Linda and the Board of Education of Topeka, Kansas. There were other similar cases pending at the Supreme Court as well as this one, but the court just rolled them all into this one. And this case involved the idea behind separate but equal in educational facilities. Remember the Plessy versus Ferguson case in 1896 we've talked about. This rules that racially separated public facilities were equal. Yet Brown versus the Board of Education will finally overrule this case. <clears throat> Linda Brown had to travel several miles to a segregated public school even though she lived virtually next door to a white elementary school. The Supreme Court stated that in the field of public education, separate but equal had no place. They found separate schools to be wrong. And the court later issued rules for implementing their original statement in schools. And it, it ruled that communities must work to desegregate their schools with all deliberate speed. But it didn't set a timetable to do it, class. It didn't provide much other guidance. And this is going to cause a lot of problems. Some areas will change their policy. Others, especially in the South, will take a lot longer to implement this court case. <clears throat> there was very strong opposition in the South, and it became known as massive resistance. <clears throat> 
what few interracial groups that existed during the 1950s and 40s were quickly dissolved. School districts ignored the ruling. Others, they might let in a few non-whites to say they changed their policies. Southern politicians class and members of Congress wrote the Southern Manifesto in 1956 denouncing the Brown decision and encouraged their constituents to defy it. According to Senator Byrd from Virginia, if we can organize the Southern states for massive resistance to this order, I think that in time the rest of the country will realize integration is not something that's going to be accepted in the South. Robert Byrd, he was very pr a proud member of the KKK for many years. And he led this Southern Manifesto and mantra in the South. Now in Birmingham, we have Reverend Fred Shuttlesworth leading a local civil rights movement. Other communities had grassroots movements as well. Fred Shuttlesworth started the Alabama Christian Movement for Human Rights during the 1950s, and this group led, group led boycotts, peaceful protests, and sued to dismantle segregation. For his efforts to try to enroll his children in public school here in Birmingham, Reverend Shuttlesworth was attacked, beaten, arrested, sentenced to hard labor in one situation, and had his home and church bombed. Later, Shuttlesworth movement will bridge with Martin Luther King Jr.'s national movement in Birmingham. Shuttlesworth made all the difference to the movement in Birmingham. Alabama had early successes during the movement, um, and one of those is going to be the Montgomery bus boycott. On December the 1st, 1955, Rosa Parks was arrested in Montgomery, Alabama for refusing to give up her seat on the bus to whites. And if you do not know, during the time of Jim Crow in the South, blacks had to give up seats and move to the back of the bus if whites got on. What followed her arrest was the Montgomery, Alabama bus boycott. Black workers who needed to commute to their jobs formed carpools to ride back and forth to work or they walked to work, sometimes even over very long distances, rather than take the bus. And the end result was that the boycott forced economic pressure and social pressure on the busing system. So think about it, if you were a store owner, you wouldn't have as many people standing outside your store or shopping in it if there weren't people on the bus stop. Instead, blacks shopped in their own neighborhood. Martin Luther King Jr. got involved with these issues in Montgomery while a pastor there. And he felt nonviolence was the best way to handle most issues. He urged blacks to take a moral high ground and peacefully demonstrate rather than incite violence. And it wasn't just blacks protesting, many whites and non-whites were involved too. The Southern Christian Leadership Conference was an interracial group King founded and was a powerful and popular movement in the South and eventually the rest of the country. Martin Luther King Jr. will ultimately become America's most significant civil rights leader of the 1950s and 60s. He achieved his most uh, successes in advancing the cause of civil rights while leading a series of highly publicized campaigns in Alabama between 55 and 1965. We don't have time to talk about all of them, but during this decade of mass protest against racial injustices, King's words and deeds inspired millions of people throughout the world. In 1956, the Supreme Court declared segregation and public transportation to be illegal. Montgomery abandoned their seating policies and the boycott came to a close. So this was one small win for the movement. By the 1960 presidential campaign, civil rights had emerged as a crucial issue. Just a f few weeks before the presidential election, <clears throat> Martin Luther King Jr. had been arrested while leading a protest in Atlanta, Georgia. John F. Kennedy, our president-elect, phoned Coretta Scott King, his wife, King's wife, to express his concern, and a call from Robert Kennedy, the president's brother, to a judge helped secure her husband's release. The Kennedy's personal intervention at this time really led to a public endorsement of Martin Luther King Jr. 
And the influential, um, you know, really influenced the civil rights movement at the time. And across the nation, more than 70% of African Americans voted for Kennedy. And these votes provided the winning edge in several key states. When President Kennedy finally took office in January of 1961, African Americans had high expectations for the new administration. Now, he was somewhat a reluctant leader of the civil rights movement, and it'll actually be Johnson who makes the difference for the movement. And I'm going to talk much more about Kennedy and Johnson in my next two lectures. But by February of 1960, black college students in Greensboro, North Carolina, staged a sit-in at a segregated Woolworths lunch counter. It wasn't the first time this has happened, but in the next few weeks, similar demonstrations happened all over the South. And by the fall, they formed a group called the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, or SNCC, to keep the spirit of resistance alive. Then, a group called CORE that was formed after World War II will take freedom rides through the South in an attempt to desegregate all busing systems. With a president backing protests for social equality for blacks, what do we have to lose, right? Like I mentioned, SNCC is going to lead these interracial groups of students to work with CORE to organize freedom rides all across the South and force desegregation of bus stations. Yes, the Montgomery boycott um, had worked. The Montgomery bus boycott had worked in Montgomery, but what about the rest of the nation? If they wanted attention, they got it, class. In some places like Birmingham and Anniston, the groups were met with savage violence, beatings, and arrest. Kennedy had to send federal marshals in just to keep peace. Later, President Kennedy ordered integration of all bus and train stations. And I want to take this time to mention our Birmingham Civil Rights Institute class. It is top notch. It's a great facility. You can go and see one of the buses that were bombed in Anniston during this time. So let me encourage you to go to the Birmingham Civil Rights Institute. Class, I'm going to take a brief pause here and we'll pick back up with part two of the civil rights movement in just a moment.